welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. As you can see, I'm out for a walk this morning. Um, I've just dropped a package off to one of my lovely local customers. Hi Elizabeth, if you're watching. And uh, I've just got to this point where I've got an amazing view over Cardiff Bay. I thought I'd share that at the beginning of our episode today. So I shall turn you around and show you some of the views. Enjoyed a few scenes from my walk this morning. Uh, I think I said welcome to Yarn and Yarns, but just in case I didn't, uh, welcome or welcome back. You um, are most welcome to my corner of YouTube. Uh, my name's Angela and all the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Um, and I chat about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet and weaving for the most part. Um, today is one of my weekly chat videos where I sit and talk about what I've been making in the last seven days or so. So I hope you have your um, current project with you and maybe a cosy drink. I have got a cup of tea um, today, um, well an infusion, I'm drinking puka or pucker love um, which I think is rose, chamomile and lavender. Um, and I'm drinking in my yarn and yarns mug so shameless plug for my shop <laughs> and I've just put a pre-order up for these mugs um, if you missed out the first time round um, a few of you messaged me to say um, was I going to have another pre-order and um, there's one over available on the website now um, if you're interested in grabbing your own yarn and yarns mug um, for your favourite cuppa <laughs> This video is not going well. Um, I've been sat chatting to myself for about 20 minutes and then my phone went blank and I was like, what's going on? And I hadn't pressed record, it was just on photo mode. <laughs> oh, so hopefully I can remember everything that I wanted to chat about. Um, this week I have some knitting, some spinning and some crochet. And if you entered our Yarn and Yarns um, Vlogtober make along, then please stick around to the end because I'm going to um, draw the prize winners for that make along and I also have some new prizes for our TGIF thank goodness thank god it's finished Cal um, to share with you at the end too so uh, yeah all that coming up in the next 20 minutes or so I think I'll start with spinning this week because my um, spinning stuff is at the top of the pile as I've just been chatting about it to no one <laughs> I've got three spins to show you this week Yes, three. Um, so first, I just wanted to quickly show you uh, the finished yarn from the spin that I tatted about last week. Uh, this was my little experiment to see how much I could fit on my Ashford bobbin, uh, the e-spinner that I recently purchased, a gift to myself for my birthday. Um, comes with quite large bobbins and I wanted to do a little experiment to see if I could fit 200 grams of plied fibre onto one bobbin and I was able to do that. Um, I didn't think about the logistics of winding this off onto my nitty noddy though because um, I have got one giant, I don't think you really call it a skein, <laughs> it's a bit of a mess but um, this is my 200 grams ish of fibre um, as wound off um, so it's been washed and set and I'm really pleased with how this yarn has come out. Um, I just did a um, traditional two ply and um, it's probably a DK weight, sport to DK weight I would say. I haven't um, done any of the stats yet um, but I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It puffed up quite nicely um, in the washing so it's a little bit thicker than it looked when it first um, came off of the e-spinner. So yeah I've got this Ooh, big giant loop of fibre which is really hard to skein up. <laughs> I need a slightly larger nitty noddy if I'm going to do so much fibre in one go again. <laughs> so um, I've got that and this little mini skein because um, I don't know if you watched last week's um, chat um, you'll know that I messed up in the uh, sort of setting up of my spinner when I first started this project so I ended up with a little sort of mini skein at the start uh, but yeah um, that's all done. Once again, I want to say a huge thank you to the lovely Kathy, um, who is Mountain Pearl, um, a member of our community here, um, who so, so generously gifted me this fibre. Um, so thank you so much, Kathy, for giving me the opportunity to have a play to see um, how much fibre I could fit onto my bobbin and also for giving me the opportunity to 
um, spin with a fibre that would not be um, otherwise easily available to me here in the UK. Um, I'm really thankful for that opportunity and I feel very lucky to have um, been able to um, spin up this beautiful yarn from that fibre. Thank you so much. Um, I have been thinking about possibilities for this yarn. I need to do a bit of um, measuring and calculation. Um, I recently saw um, a really beautiful version of the, I'm not sure if it's called Seeker or Silker. Um, I'll put the name on the screen. It's a shawl by, by Dawn Landex and um, it's a triangle shaped shawl, a simple twisted rib, I believe. And um, the original um, sort of pattern sample is in this beautiful deep green. Um, it looks stunning. Um, and if I remember, I'll put a picture of that up on the screen now. Um, but I recently saw um, a colourful version of this shawl. Um, and immediately um, when I saw that version, I thought of this yarn. Um, that pattern uses a four ply yarn. Um, and as I say, I think mine is more of a sport to DK. Um, so I might have to do some calculations to see whether I think I would actually be able to get a shawl um, out of the yarn that I have. Um, but that's kind of um, ruminating in the back of my mind at the moment for this project. If not, uh, this yarn will go into my handspun stash um, for a little while and I'm sure the perfect project will come along at some point. If you were able to follow along with Vlogtober, um, you'll know that on the last day um, I spent some time blending up um, some bits of fibre um, that were sent to me um, by the lovely Mandy. Um, hi Mandy! Um, and I used my hand carders to blend up um, and make a little mini skein um, ready to knit into a gnome which will be one of the prizes that I will give away at the end of the video. Um, and so this is the little mini skein that I came up with for that. Um, I mixed up some yellow, some oranges, uh, a bit of red and some brown um, to make this kind of autumnal uh, mini skein and I'm going to pair that um, with this other uh, mini skein that I spun earlier on in October um, again from another little sample that uh, Kathy sent me and I'm going to pair these together um, for a little autumnal name for our um, Vlogtober cow prize or one of them. But the final um, spin that I've been playing around with this week um, is a new spin on my e-spinner um, earlier on in the year, I ordered some fibre from Smith Studio Designs here in the UK. Yeah. We were chatting on Instagram and I ordered some fibre and she was just about to come out with a new sock blend. Uh, so I think this is something like, uh, I don't have the label with me, I've left it downstairs with the rest of the fibre. Um, it's something like um, 75 or 80% um, blue face Leicester and then 20% nylon with some sparkle too and um, I said to them uh, just send me a surprise colourway I don't mind what it is and I got the witch's pyre colourway um, which was two 50 gram um, bumps of fibre um, one in this lovely tonal grey and the second half of the fibre um, which I'm spinning at the moment downstairs um, was a pink colour tonal pink and I was aiming to spin a three ply um, sock yarn um, it's my <laughs> nemesis trying to get a fingering weight three ply sock yarn for my fiber um, every time I try a three ply um, I end up with something more akin to sport DK and I think this is slightly finer than some of the other um, spins that I've done before I'm looking next to me because somewhere handy I should have my last attempt at this but I can't find it it doesn't really matter um, but I've this is definitely the finest um, three ply. I did a chain ply um, for this fibre. Uh, it's definitely the finest that I've come up with so far in my attempts for sock spinning. Um, but it's still slightly thicker than a commercial um, sort of four ply fingering weight yarn. Uh, if I grab some commercial, hold these on my finger together. My camera's probably not going to focus, but I'll try it and zoom in. Um, but I think you can see on my finger there, um, my three ply is a little bit rounder, a little bit um, sort of fatter. Um, it's not too far off though. Um, so I think this is kind of heavy fingering to sport weight rather than sport to DK. So I'm happy with that. Um, you may be wondering why I've got three mini skeins, one of which is um, rapidly coming unraveled. Um, a chain ply can show up um, any weaknesses in your spun singles. Um, you're basically, when you're plying your yarn, um, it's almost like a sort of crochet chain stitch. You are pulling up um, a length of your um, singles through 
another loop of your singles it's a bit difficult to explain um, but um, there's quite a lot of tension on your singles when you're doing it and um, as you can see my arm broke um, in several places and I ended up not bothering to join it but to just make several mini skeins. Um, my plan for these socks when I spin the other half of the fibre, sorry hair getting in the way, um, is to make some striped socks. Um, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to do sort of large stripes or whether I'll do um, a one row stripe using the helical um, knitting technique. I haven't decided yet. I figured it didn't really matter if I ended up with bits of yarn rather than one um, full skein. So I've got the second half of this to spin and then I can hopefully knit up some hand spun socks which will be something exciting to look forward to. On to crochet next I think. Um, last week I had, <laughs> yeah crochet two weeks in a row, uh, but last week I made that one tiny little granny square so it probably didn't really count. Um, but I have been working on my Babette blanket uh, this week. Um, as part of my Vlogtober um, series of videos, um, I chatted about my making plans for the rest of the year. And if you are interested but didn't watch that, I'll pop a link up in the corner here. I basically sat and reviewed knitting and crochet projects that I'd already started and sort of prioritised what I think I could get finished over the next sort of month to six weeks um, before we head into December, where I think I might be starting a few new projects. And one of the things that I reckoned on being able to finish would be my Babette blanket. Um, it's a crochet project that's been, the pattern's been around for quite some time. Um, this is an interweave crochet magazine from spring 2006, but I believe the pattern's available as a sort of single download. And it's basically a bunch of solid granny squares um, in different sizes joined together. Um, I think the original pattern uses um, Koi Goo sock yarn. Um, I picked some woolly um, yarn that I got at Loop in London and I'm on the joining process now. I've been on the joining process for a while um, but this is the centre panel of my blanket which I had already um, joined um, before I started working on this this week. I'm just going to push you back a little bit so I've got a little bit more room to hold these up. Um, but basically the blanket, you make all of the squares individually and then you join sections of the blanket which then sort of build up on top of each other to make the final sort of centre panel. Um, so I have um, this week been making the other sort of panels so starting to join um, all of my um, sort of squares together and I've done quite a lot um, I am pretty happy with the progress that I'm making so far um, I'm working on section nine at the moment and there's ten uh, sort of sections and then I shall um, add all of those on to this um, centerpiece so I think this is section one to five or one to four I can't remember I think it's one to five um, and then I decided actually I'd make all of these uh, sort of individual sections before um, carrying on with the joining um, so my plan of this week is to finish joining the sections to join them all together and then to deal with um, the mess of ends um, that I'm being left with in the joining process I've already um, woven in most of the ends for most of the squares and um, I actually crocheted a lot of them in um, as I went. Um, I'm using what I've got left over to join uh, the squares and I've got quite a lot left of the light pink um, which means that in some parts my join is quite visible. Um, I'm crochet joining this together, uh, the pattern recommends to sew it together um, but I'm using my crochet hook to just um, slip stitch the blocks together but I don't mind the fact that the join is showing in places. Um, I feel like because this is all lots of sort of small squares, it kind of puts me in mind of the quilting process, patchwork and quilting. Um, so um, I think the sort of patchy nature and the fact that my seams aren't 100% even and some of them are showing through kind of reminds me of that um, kind of patchwork, use it up, um, kind of ethos and um, I'm just really really enjoying it. Will you back in a bit? I don't need quite so much room. So finally on to knitting and I have two finished objects and a work in progress to show you um, although both of my finished objects actually need washing and blocking so they're not finished finished but pretty much there. So first off I managed to finish the socks that are going to be a Christmas present for my dad. Uh, I knit these from West Yorkshire Spinners 
um, yarn, the Winwick Mum range, um, and this is the Hidden Jewel colourway, um, which is just lovely purples and whites. And again, a little plug for the shop, I do have this in stock in the shop if you fancied making a pair of these for yourself. Um, I Last week I showed these off, I'd finished the first sock and I just started, um, so my lovely Attic Spin Dye uh, Leather and Liberty Progress Keeper here um, shows off how much of the second sock I've done, so not much at all. Um, so this week I managed to knit the second sock. Um, these aren't 100% matching, but they're not too far off. And what happened, um, this has got quite an interesting sort of pattern repeat to it. It's not, as you can see, a sort of definite stripe. And it's got these sort of like white bits here. I'll try and cast on a color change to help me try and match my socks. Um, but on this um, sock, I joined in I cast on at one sort of white join and then on this sock I managed to um, sort of cast on on the second white stripe. I think you can just about see um, that extra bit of white on the top there which meant that it put me out um, slightly um, particularly on the heel flap so you might remember um, that on the first sock I said I had to do a bit of yarn management and wind off some of the yarn I picked up for the gusset there was going to be sort of like one round of white sort of coming here and um, round the front like a bit disjointedly um, but I didn't end up having to do that for the second um, sock because you, as you can see if I hold, hold both of the heels up um, there's a lot more um, white on this second heel um, but I don't think my dad's gonna mind that um, he probably won't even notice to be honest <laughs> um, I did a three by one rib um, I've not knit socks for my dad before he does have the same size feet as me so I've been able to sort of try these on um, but I'm not sure about the sort of width that he needs um, so a nice rib that's got some um, sort of stretch in it or will suck in to um, accommodate different sort of shaped legs um, should hopefully do the trick um, so yeah I need to do, give these a wash and then I can put them away ready to gift them um, at Christmas time my dad lives over um, in the east of England very unlikely that I'll get to see him um, this year with everything going on so yeah I hope he enjoys those socks when he does receive them Second finished object is my waiting for rain shawl uh, this was one of my 12 cast ons for last year and this was also on my sort of hit list for projects to get finished by the end of the year um, and again um, it needs a good blocking um, yeah I'm showing you the right size side as you can see I've got some ends to weave in um, <laughs> um, I knit this from Ainsworth and Prynn got the label no not very helpful um, Ainsworth and Prynn in the Linnet colorway and it was a blend of yak silk and wool I think um, and it's this beautiful sort of neutral um, colour with pops of blue and sort of rusty orange in it. Um, absolutely gorgeous. But I'm looking forward to giving this a block. Uh, it's quite big, quite large already, as you can see. Uh, really nice to give it a good block and stretch out these beautiful lace panels. Um, the pattern is by Sylvia McFadden, Soft Sweater. Um, yeah, waiting for rain. I'm really, really, it's so soft and snuggly. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting that blocked. When I made that, what I'm working on video, I had 20 whips. Um, I ended up frogging two, um, which took me down to 18. Um, I finished two now, so I'm down to 16. Um, so yeah, my aim is to try and get down to about 10 for December. Um, so yeah, good start um, this week by finishing off two. Hot on the heels of those two is my Crescent Moon test knit. So this is the work in progress that I have to share with you this week. And I am on to the border section um, of this shawl. Um, I'm making mine in a really deep uh, sort of chocolatey brown. So it's not going to really um, show this pattern off to um, its full glory in this light. Um, but it's basically a really large squishy garter stitch shawl. Um, and I'm now doing this um, really fun uh, sort of cable pattern. Um, for the border edge I think I'm three quarters of the way through one repeat and I've got two repeats to go and this was just a couple of hours of knitting um, on Sunday morning so um, I'm fairly confident um, that with just an evening or two of work um, this will get done I wish I could show this off a little bit more uh, nicely holding it up against the light is not really um, showing this off at all and it's huge as well <laughs> which doesn't help but you get the gist and I did put a picture on Instagram um, of some of the uh, lovely cable details so you might have um, seen that already 
in the pursuit of showing you that my shawl is falling off uh, the shawl that i'm wearing was a lovely gift from my um oh, fabulous friend jeanette and if you watched the last day of vlogtober you'll have seen me um opening up the package um with this surprise gift in everything for the making this week um, i do want to quickly show off a couple of prizes that have come in for our tgif make along um, and again i did show these um on the vlogtober videos but i appreciate that not everyone um, will have been able to keep up with those so I wanted to show them off here um, first off I got some handmade um, items of gorgeousness um, from the lovely Ellie um, she hand spun and then hand wove um, two pouches that I'm going to give away here as part of the make along aren't they just glorious so this one is a lovely uh, zipper pouch and then I have this a drawstring pouch um, she did also send a third which I have got here um, and I have been persuaded to keep this I haven't started putting it in use yet because I wanted to show it off here first um, but she did say I could keep one and I was umming and ahhing and um, a few of you encouraged me to keep this one for myself so I think I'm going to I hope you don't mind uh, but this will be the perfect size to put my kindle in um, so yeah this one's staying with me I'm afraid <laughs> mine mine <laughs> um but these two um will be given away as part of our um tgif cal um so thank you so much ellie for donating those they're really really beautiful for um encouraging me and allowing me to keep that third piece that you made and the next prize donation that came in this week uh, from the lovely andy and angela at attic spin die um, and they sent some yarn and some stitch markers for me to give away um, as part of that um, make along so i have got three of their uh, liberty and lace uh, progress keepers and you saw mine um, on my dad's sock project um, they were so kind as to send me one of these in a previous uh, package and um, so i've got a set of those to give away there's an acorn um, a bird, a snail, a clover and a fox in that set. What a lovely little set of progress keepers that is. Uh, thank you so much to um, Andy and Angela for those. But not only did they send that, they also sent um, two glorious skeins of yarn for our uh, TGIF make along and an additional prize which is going to become an extra prize for our um, Vlogtober make along which I shall be drawing the winners for shortly. Um, so first off I've got a skein of Stormy Sunset um, which is their DK weight yarn. Um, glorious purples with some rusty um, sort of orangey colours in there. Uh, this is just so so pretty um, and there's another Acorn Progress Keeper attached to that. Um, so this is their um, Superwash DK um, Merino Nylon Base. Well, alongside that they also sent their Grouse on the Moor colourway um, which is their four ply base again um, Superwash Merino Nylon um and look at those beautiful saturated colors greens and rusts again um, and there's some beautiful uh, sort of tealy specks in that um, and there's a spinning wheel um, progress keeper on that one uh, so thank you so much to andy and angela for those donations um and a set of mini skeins um so so generous of you to send all three and i'm going to give away these uh, right now as part of our vlogtober cow this is the halloween mini set so um, i was planning on just having the one prize for our vlogtober make along um which was going to be the um hand spun hand knitted by me gnome um but as this is halloween themed um i figure it was uh, the perfect opportunity uh, to give away uh, this set of minis as well so i needed to grab my phone which um, I'm actually using to prop up my phone that I'm using to record on because I forgot to bring my tripod so sorry angle is changing Ooh, that's a little bit dodgy but hey let's go with it <clears throat> um, I've got a piece of paper somewhere high tech I know what have I done with it bear with uh, thank you to everyone who joined in our vlogtober make along um, we ended up with about 75 entries um, including the projects that I made um, which was the pair of socks for um my mother-in-law for her birthday and my spinning i'm counting that as part obviously my name doesn't go into the prize draw um but with my entries there was about 75 um projects finished all together um and made during our make along posts 2 to 58 on ravelry um i had some people email me with their finished objects um, and then the rest um, have come from Instagram. And I've just put numbers by the side of all of them. Um, if one of the Ravelry numbers comes up, then I'll have to look that up. Um, but I've got a random number generator um, on my phone. 
Right, I'm going to try that again. I started doing this number generator thing and it wouldn't generate a number. <laughs> but I think that was my fault. I messed up the program. So, random number generator on my phone. Um, number two is the first post on Ravelry. Um, and then I have assigned um, numbers to um, like the emails and the Instagram posts. Um, so we've got um, two to 73. And then hopefully this time when I press it, we'll get a winner. So this is for the mini skeins. 27. 27, okay, so that's gonna be one of our Ravelry posts. So bear with me a second. Um, I shall um, cut away um, while I figure out who is post 27 on Ravelry. You don't need to watch me figuring that out. It's number 27, coincidentally, um, is our lovely Ellie, who donated the woven prizes for our next make along. And Ellie made a spooky pumpkin ghost. Don't know how well you'll be able to see that on my phone. Isn't that cute? There we go. So cute. Uh, so well done, Ellie. Congratulations. Um, I shall be sending um, these Halloween mini skeins your way. Um, get in touch when you've seen the uh, when you've seen the video, so um, we can sort that out. Um, and then I need to, to uh, generate another number, and that will be for the handspun gnome. Um, obviously, this prize is going to take a week or two to get to you because um, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> So whoever the winner is, I hope you don't mind bearing with me. Um, so let's generate uh, winner number two. Actually, um, I'm just going to screenshot that so that I remember. Right, okay, so next. 32. 32, that's another uh, Ravelry entry. And as I've still got the Ravelry thread on my phone, that shouldn't take long. It's just a few posts down from... Um, Ellie's post um, and that is a lovely hat project from Scarfaholic who is Kath. Hi Kathy um, and she made a pumpkin hat yay <laughs> so cute um, so when you see this Kath uh, let me know and we shall figure something out as I say I am going to be um, knitting away furiously to make up a little gnome for you maybe um a week or so before that prize is ready to ship out um but just uh, let me know when you've seen the video my phone has just flashed up to say that the battery is getting low so i need to hurry up and wrap up this video um thank you to everyone who um joined in our vlogtober make along um i wish i had prizes for you all but um there were some absolutely amazing projects and the fact that we got to do like 75 finished projects in a month is just brilliant mind-blowing um so don't forget we still have our tgif make along going from um for the rest of the year and um, so any projects that you finish you can join in that make along and um be in with the chance of winning one of our lovely prizes i need to update the prize thread so that um if you go on to ravelry at all you can um see what the prizes are um but um, i shall show them off regularly um between now and the end of the year um you can join in either by um, posting in our Ravelry threads. Um, if you're not using Ravelry, you can post on Instagram using the um, hashtag TGIFCal, um, or you can email me or Caroline, the co-host, Caroline of Colourful Creativity. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of really nice prizes already. And I have one more. Um, I've been chatting today to another maker who is going to also donate a prize. So we should have um, a really, really nice prize pot um, for that um sort of prize drawing at the beginning of next year which is really exciting um before i sign off just let me know how you are what you're working on all of the usual stuff here in the uk um lockdown is being extended um to um, england now here in wales we've got um the rest of this week to be in lockdown england's going into a four-week lockdown we've had two um so it'll be interesting to see um what happens here in wales over the coming weeks um but yeah i'm just generally trying to keep in good spirits and i'm taking a little bit more time off this week um so i'm working mornings and taking afternoons off which is really nice um which is helping me um get through these works in progress i think it's one of the reasons i've had uh, two finished objects this week so maybe there'll be another couple don't want to jinx things next week um just because i've got a little bit more making time and um, between the time off and not um spending the time doing a, a video every day um my making time seems to be fairly plentiful at the moment which is brilliant uh, let me know how you are feeling um what you've been working on um all of that good stuff um sending 
good thoughts and vibes to all of my US friends for your election results, which are imminent. Um, yeah, sending love and hugs to anyone who needs it really. As always, um, thank you so much for being a wonderful part of the Yarn and Yarns community. Um, until we get to spend time together again, I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now. Such a weird angle. Too lazy to go downstairs and get my tripod. And I also feel really out of practice. It's only been like two days since I stopped doing Vlogtober. I have no idea what I'm doing, what I'm saying. Yeah, welcome to Yarn and Yarns. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Sorry about this. You either get the bottom of my chair or the underneath of my chin. What, what, do, you, what do you think? Let's go for the chin. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good double chin shot? <laughs>